In this video, we are going to attempt our first match of a new photo. Let's take a quick look at basic perspective just to remind ourselves as a refresher. In almost any given image, unless you're taking a photo straight on of a wall or up at the sky or something like that, in almost any given image of an interior or an exterior, you will have two vanishing points here and here, and then you're going to have the horizon line. So we are looking, when we're matching a new photo, we're looking for our vanishing points. We're looking to follow these lines to see where our vanishing points are. And we're also, as a result, going to be establishing where the horizon is. And that's the information that we're going to be telling SketchUp that will, that will establish the shot so that, our, so that our perspective matches up with the photo that we're using. So that's just a quick intro. So I've opened up a new file. And to start my first match photo, I'm going to go to camera match new photo and it pulls I'm going to pull up my my uh, first image which is the two-point perspective sample I'm going to open that up now that I've opened it up a lot has changed on my screen and there's a lot of things I'm not used to what am I looking at that's that's different first and foremost I've got this uh, match photo window that's floating around and that's going to give me some information I also now notice that I have a scene, which is called Two Point Perspective Sample. So what it has done is it has automatically named the scene after the photo that I brought in. Then I can see I've got this yellow line going down the middle. I've got the scale figure has kind of gone gray. And then I've got all these different lines and pick points and, and things that I can start snapping to. And I've got this kind of crazy uh, grid of blues, reds, and greens. So there's a lot going on and there's a lot I can control and let's take this one little piece at a time. The first thing I want you to look at is on your match photo uh, window that has popped up. There is a spacing option and it's giving you the spacing at five feet. For now, so that it's really easy to see what we're doing, let's change this to one foot. So just change the five to a one and hit enter and you'll notice that your grid gets a lot more dense. Okay, so that's the only thing we want to really look at right now in this window. Let's start looking at some of what we've got going on here. If I select this uh, yellow line and start moving it up and down, you'll notice that my perspective, my horizon, mm -hmm. basically is shifting in kind of some crazy ways. So I'm not going to really move the horizon yet. But this is a sustained click and hold in order to do this. All of, the, all of the movements within Match Photo are about holding on to the things that you're moving. It's kind of like when you are editing a material texture and you're editing just that one face, so you're, you're grabbing on the different pick points. This is the same, this is the same uh, idea. I can also grab this um, center point the origin point that represents the axis that I'm that I'm uh, always normally seeing in SketchUp. So this is the blue, green, and red of the axis you always look at when you open up a new file. I'm going to drag that to the center corner of this image, right here in the middle. And I've got my scale figure right next to it. So if this is supposed to represent the line of this building and this is supposed to represent the other edge, I can see already that it's that my scale is way off. I'm way too big because this this little square right here is a foot and this is a foot and this is a foot. So it's 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 way 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 too big. So I'm going to I'm going to say that the, that this um this whole upper area here is about 9 feet but we're gonna to get to that in a second. So let's just keep that in mind. Let's look at matching up these uh, perspective lines. Here's, you get two red, and notice I can pick up and move the lines and move them around, and you can pretty much move them anywhere on the screen you want. But for, our, for the sake of making this nice and easy, we've chosen a clean image here that will make this really clear. Um, so you can move the lines by themselves or you can move the pick points of the lines and that's going to start really changing the actual uh, perspective and angle of the shot. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to line up these pick points one at a time along the lines of, these, of this building. 
so that the scale, I'm sorry, so that the perspective will match up with the perspective of the image we've brought in. So I'm lining up that point and that point, that point and that point. And I'm just referencing the building. Okay, so then I'm going to pull it to this point and start from this, bring that right into the center, and then bring it to that point there. Okay, now that's putting my horizon line slightly right down the middle of the thing. There's really no horizon drawn into this picture, so we can't actually see it. So it's never a good idea to start with the horizon. You always want to start with the perspective. All that's left now is to scale this down so that it works. So if I scale, if I actually click on the blue, that's zooming in or out. And that's going to start bringing my little uh, grid lines down as well. So I can scale her way up or I can scale her way down. I wait to scale it. I wait to scale it until I'm at the very end after I've matched the perspective because it's a lot easier to do so once you've found a spot that works. So I'm scaling this down. And I said, I said that this is about nine feet. So what I want is I want this little dotted grid line to land one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I want it to be on at the ninth, the ninth there. So if I'm at zero here, that's my ninth foot right there. So I'm at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Got to take it down one more to there. Okay, so that's nine feet. So she should be about that tall against this pillar if that is nine feet. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on done. And now my, my, my photo has been matched. So if I move around, I can always click back to match photo and it's always going to go back, to, back in space. The next thing I can do is start to test this. So if I use a rectangle and just start from the origin point, Double click. Notice it's um, it's see-through. We'll get to that in a second. So I'm just going to make this a group, open it up, and push pull it up. What should happen is the perspective should match perfectly. I should be able to move this now back in place, and it will match up with the perspective of the building as it recedes. So I'm holding I'm holding shift down. I'm just moving it along the red. So this is great. I'm now in a place where as I start to draw new shapes, the new shapes will match up with the perspective of the shot. It gets difficult though to draw sometimes because you're stuck. We're so used to moving around and now we're asking to stand still. You can still move around and you can still move this stuff in place and then go back to your match photo and see how, see how it's working. Okay, lastly, here's what we need to do because, because the way the new the newer versions of SketchUp work, Match Photo defaults to this style where you're seeing through it, and I find that to be a little problematic. So I like to edit the style for Match Photo um, as I'm working so that I can see it from a different um, in a different way. And to make sense of that, let me just pull up my window styles. I'm going to go notice that um, Simple Style is already asking to be updated. Let me go to Edit. And this is pretty true if you're working with any of the default styles. So I'm going to go to Edit, and I'm going to go all the way to the back one, which is this, um, it's, the modeling, it's the modeling tab. Okay, so here's what is new now. Now we actually have something to deal with Match Photo. So if I uncheck Foreground Photo, now what it's doing is it's making the foreground elements solid. So it's not, it's not, I mean, if I were to uncheck background photo, I'm not even seeing the background photo. What's the point? You can also play with the opacity. If you want, if you want to keep them, if you want to keep them opaque, but I, I, I just don't like this. I think that this is kind of bizarre looking. I'd like to see the materials and textures of all of that stuff. So I'm just going to turn that all off. You can also play with the opacity of the background photo. If you want to keep, if you don't, if you don't want it to be super dark, but again, I don't know why you would want to do that. I think it's nice to have it all the way up. So let's just uncheck foreground photo and then adjust the style. So now whenever I go back to that shot, these foreground elements are going to be solid and they're going to look the way I want them to look. Now I can start doing some editing. 
And you can even engage push-pull and then click back to your match photo while you're push-pulling and start to carve out these new shapes. Like let's say we are doing a an architectural projection that sticks out over this and we just want to see what that looks like. So you can still go into all of your other tools. You can use paint, you can add a little red element there. You can start to add new things to these buildings. And that will all match up with the perspective of the photo. And as, you, as it recedes back in space, it should match with what you're working. Okay, so this is our first example. So play around with trying to do that. It's tricky. It's going to take a, a little bit of practice to get used to grabbing the different um, pick points. We're going to in another in our next video. We're going to look at one that's a little bit more extreme and um, just just kind of use it for more practice.